Well, next up, we have uh, Bruce Nicholson. This is the first time that Bruce has been uh, on our show, uh, but we're so welcome, uh, so glad to have him. Uh, and he's going to, as I said a few minutes ago, be building one of his models, a 53-foot um, coastal uh, steam ferry. So, Bruce, thank you so much for participating with us, and, and I wish you uh, all the success in the world. Thank you so much. All right. Let's see. All right. Thank you for having me on your program. We will be de begin discussing this evening a few. Hey, matters. Bruce. Bruce, yeah. can you can you hit on where it says display settings up at the upper and flip? You're you're showing us that the wrong. Oh, I don't know which. Go ahead and hit on PowerPoint again down at yeah. the bottom. There you go. That's good. That's it. Super. Thanks. I out of mute. You're all good. I'm good. I'm right there. Okay. All right. Uh, to start off with, I want to discuss a few maritime words. This will make it easier as we go through the next four segments. Uh, these are words that we're going to use this evening, though. A waterline hull and a full hull. And what's the difference between the two of them? That's a waterline hull boat. That's a full hull boat. The difference is, is from the keel to the waterline has been removed on the waterline boat. That allows us modelers on our dioramas to show this boat as if it's actually floating on water. It obviously really isn't. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the words port and starboard. The best way I can explain this is that when you're facing the front of a boat, the right hand side is the starboard side, the left side is the port side. It's not right and left, it's port and starboard. The bulwark, the bulwark of a boat is the rail. And this rail is right here. It's called a rail or it's called a bulwark. And you'll often hear people refer to from the keel of the boat to the top of the bulwark. They're talking about the entire vessel. Bow and stern. This is the stern, the aft portion of a boat. This is the bow, the front of the boat. The deck house. This is what we're going to be working on tonight. This is the deck house right here. The pilot house normally rests on top of the deck house. In the particular boat that we're building, it's going to rest just as you see it. This is the boat that we will be building, but this happens to be the full hull version of it. I want to briefly touch on painting. I recommend you prime all components prior to any assembly with a gray automotive spray primer made by Duplicolor. There are others. I, I don't know how they are. I use Duplicolor. Over the gray, then take some white Duplicolor and hit it with the white if you're going to have your boat be a white boat. This process allows the gray to come through and gives it a weathering effect. These boats are not all pristine and you're, when you view them. So this kind of helps you to begin your weathering process right up front. So before you do any assembling, I recommend that you paint your base colors. One of my goals of the podcast is to show that building a model boat can be no more difficult than assembling any NHOO scale structure kit that was designed for model railroad applications. If the model I had to build or form the hull or the base of the boat, then I would concede that hull construction experience would be helpful. This is not the case with our kits. The hull used in these kits are completely formed and only need finishing and painting. There are no special talents required. The superstructures, we refer to superstructures as the deck house, the pilot house, or any other added feature to the top of the hull. They're basically the same thing as building a, a, a structure kit. Well, you might say, well, uh, how do I put a flat bottom structure on a boat that has a curved deck? 
And as you can see, these decks are curved. They call it a curvature. This is a natural curvature. You can see it right here. And I'm telling you to put this flat bottom building on top of this and have it fit. Not going to happen. So when we design these walls, we design the curvature into the wall for you. So there's no sanding, there's no playing around with cutting. Basically, you're building four walls and a roof and you're putting it on the hull of the boat. I decided to design this kit after carefully examining the 57 foot Sabino. Many of you have heard of that boat. Making a steam powered vessel that would easily fit on a train layout and span the time requirement that I felt important. Sabino was operated from 1908 until 1974 and is shot in length. This is not the model of the kit of the Sabino, but similar and would have been used for the same purposes. A quick history on the Sabino or the Taurus, built in 1908, worked in the Damascotta River area in Maine. It sunk in 1918. It was, it was then salvaged. It went back to work in the Casco Bay area. In 1971, it was sold to Corbin's of Newburyport, well, actually they're from Salisbury, Philip and Irene Corbin of Salisbury, Mass. In 1958, they bought it. In 1971, they sold it to their son, Jim, on the Merrimack River in Newburyport, and he wanted to make some money with it, run some excursions. Well, I don't know how that worked out, but in 1974, they began the transfer of ownership to the Mystic Museum in Mystic, Connecticut. In 1992, the vessel hit the national, it, it, was, it was listed on the National Historic Landmark. This is the Taurus as it was originally built. I would say this is not long after it was built. This is what it looked like. I want to, I want to show you something here. This is the pilot house here. This pilot house goes from here all the way to the deck. This is the floor of the pilot house right about here. So there's a room below here that's connected. Also, there is no roof that comes forward here, okay? There's nothing here. I wanna show you the next photo of the same boat. Now we have a roof that goes forward. And we also have no lower part for the pilot house. And we also have an enclosure here that we didn't have on the earlier photo, okay? No enclosure, no roof, and the full pilot house. Today, this is what the boat looks like sitting in the Mystic Museum. This roof is now gone and this wall is gone. The reason I'm bringing this up is if one is concerned about building the model strictly to the prototype, they can stop worrying. As you note, know, these photos, in these photos, there is little similarity in the same vessel as it moves through time. This gives the model the license to be creative and do a little bashing and scratch building. You will also note that the general condition of the vessel is something less than pristine, which gives the model a license to do some weathering. Yes, we have given you a specific kit to build, but you can feel comfortable with changing its design and condition and producing something similar, but by no means the same. All right. I'm talking about the, the assembly. The assembly on this kit is gonna be broken down into three prime areas. One is the hull, and this is the hull right here. What do we do with the hull? That's a major part of the boat. The second area is the deck house, which we talked about earlier. This is the deck house right here. The third area that we're gonna be concerned with is the pilot house right here. The pilot house sits on top of the deck house, the deck house, sits on top of the hull. While we're here, I wanna go through a, a few of these parts. These are, your, these are the parts that are in the kit right here. This is pretty much the full kit. Hull, this is a laser cut wood deck. 
This is a pilot house, a deck house roof. These are the walls, the deck house that you're going to be working with tonight. I want to specifically note that there are two pieces right here. These are curvature braces. We're going to call them number six in our conversation. The way they are laying on this carrier, laser cut carrier, there's a, the end of them, there's a B here and a B here on your drawing. The B end of these parts must be on the forward portion of the deck house wall because this creates the curvature of the walls when they're glued together. We'll go through this again. The other part that we'll be concerned with tonight are these two walls right here. These are the pilot house walls, port and stop. We did the components of the kit. This is a pretty good composite of all the miscellaneous parts that you'll find in the kit. The bits, these are it's a whistle, pilot house fittings. There's a good picture of the hull right there. These are cowls, it's a metal cowl, lifeboat, smokestack, lights again. This is in the kit and it's a good reference point to work with. In the kit also is a full set of assembly drawings and you'll, you'll be working with a lot of these over the next couple of weeks. And, and there's a full, full assembly instruction booklet there as well. Not in the kit, but on our website, and I think that Jim put this on a new tracks website as well, is a kit prep and important notes for the H136W. I take the time to read this. If you don't have access, you obviously have access to the internet, but if you, if you didn't have it, you can send me an email, call me, and I'll mail you a copy of it. Also, it's a nautical, nautical glossary of terms on our website. Good to know some of those words and a little bit of information on what we use for weathering. Right, a little bit about the assembly. We're going to be working tonight. We're going to prep the deck house walls for assembly. We're not going to assemble them. We're going to prep them. We're going to attach the deck, which is right here, onto the top of the hull. We're going to assemble passenger doors, and we're going to assemble deck house doors. This is the deck. This is your deck house walls, the four of them. This is that number six board I was talking to you about earlier. There's two of them. These are your two pilot house side walls that, this, that we're gonna be putting doors into. It's kind of important that you understand these are laser cut wood pieces, deck, deck house walls, number six board, and pilot house walls. Start with the deck house wall. This is the number six board that I was talking to you about earlier. There are two of them. These are 1 16th by 1 8th in diameter. That, that's the size of them. The 1 16th inch piece is the part that gets glued to the interior of the deck house walls, not the 1 8th size. The, the 1 16th gives you the curvature that you need for that wall. Basically, you, you come up about an eighth of an inch off the bottom of the wall and glue this onto the wall, clamp it. I say clamp it here, 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 and here, because you want to get the effect of that curvature. You do the same thing on both the port side and the starboard side. Set those aside to dry. Before you do that, though, let's do some glue blocks. In the kit, we've supplied you with 1 inch square uh, wood, wood strip. Cut a bunch of 3 16th inch long little blocks of wood. 
blew them to the top of the interior of the deck house walls on both sides. Once the glue is set, go back, sand them down so they're flush to the top of the wall. On the front wall and the rear wall, you can cut a piece of 160 square, I'd say an inch, three quarters of an inch to one inch long, and do the same thing. Glue it on the inside, glue it on the inside, and again, sand it down so it's flush with the top of the wall. All right, this is the deck. We're now going to take Hey, Bruce, Bruce, yeah. if you want us to see your cursor, you need to move your cursor on the second screen, which is the one we're viewing. When you do it on the first screen, yeah, there you go. Now we oh. see your cursor. There we go. Thanks. You want to go back and start over? No. That's good. I think we got it. We can go from here. Good. Okay. Good enough. Okay. This is the deck. We're going to take this deck and we're going to place it on the top of the resin hull. And we talked about a bulwark earlier. Bulwark was the rail. At the bottom of the bulwark, there's a little bead that goes all the way around the hull. This deck has got to sit inside of that bead. In order to do that, you're going to have to do a little bit of modification right here and right here and maybe right here to, let, to get it to fit perfectly inside of that hull, inside of that, that ring. Once you've got that thing set and it's sitting flat, get yourself some little glue blocks. One for here, one for here, one for here, and one for here. I say half inch board or anything that's going to sit on here. Put your glue on the bottom of the, of, the, of the deck. Put your deck into the resin hull. Put your glue blocks in place. I'm going to, they really like clamp blocks, not glue blocks, clamp blocks. Get four clamps and clamp this tight. Bring this right in tight and let it set. Now you've basically, you've done all you're going to have to do with that deck and that hull. That's the only assembly that's involved for you. All right. We're going to talk a little bit tonight about the assembly of components. The first thing we're going to look at is the pilot house door assembly. As you can see, this is kind of like a sandwich or a layered effect. These pieces are also have the self stick on them. The pilot house door starts with a number 44, which is a piece of clear acetate. acetate. Then you have 14, which is the basic door. 25, which is a trim, lays on top of 14. 27 is a trim, lays on top of 25. 24 lays on top of 25 and 24A is a little round piece that lays on top of 24. Now you have a sandwich door. It's, it's ready to go. Just take and sand the sides a little bit, set it aside. Now we're going to do the passenger door assembly. The passenger door assembly is basically the same thing, but it's only two parts. It's number 32, which is your basic door. And then 34 is the trim. That's going to go on top of 32. Now, when you get that done, we got to talk about what are we going to do with these doors? Well, this is a passenger door. It's going to go onto this wall and this wall. At the same time you're doing that, I want you to look at this. Whoops, I got, I'm not there. Okay, there you go. I'm sorry. This is your deck house door. This is the trim. Put it on top of there. It sits, it's, it's finished. Now you're going to take and you're, you're going to find some stock, four by four HO strip stock. You're going to cut two, four lengths, one inch each. And as you can see, this rests on top of this door and this rests on the bottom of this door. These are the sliders for this door. This whole assembly you're going to bring it and you're going to glue this assembly right here. Your top slider, your lower slider, and I would take and I would put the finished door right here, not in the opening. I would display this kit with an open door 
with the door to the right or to the left, whichever applies. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. The pilot house door that we worked on, there, this is it right here. There's the two walls, side walls. I do the same thing. I would take this door and I would sand this edge, put an angle on it, and I would glue that edge right here. And I'd have that door in the open position. Now, if you want the door closed, that's fine. Just fit it flush inside of that opening and glue it in place. All right. I think I've used up my time. If there's any questions, shoot. If not, we'll be back with more next week. Hey, Bruce, one, one question on the deck. Should the deck be finished and weathered before installing it into the, um, into the hull since it's wood and going into a steel hull? Yeah, I would take all every, every, every piece of wood that you have on a laser cut wood, I would prime it and put a finished color on it before I did anything. So right. yes, that deck is going to be, it's going to have a primer gray. What I would do is I would just put it on with a primer gray. I wouldn't put a finished coat on that deck. I'd put the I'd primer gray it, put the deck on, and then I'd start using weathering colors. I'd, I'd use weathering to get the final color that I want. I'd probably lend more to a cream color on top of the gray, a cream. I don't know whether that'd be depot buff or something of that nature. And then I would use India ink and, uh, and uh, India ink and, and uh, donation alcohol and weather that pretty heavily. And then I would put my deck house on top of that. Bruce, what was the power for this boat? The power was, this was a steam engine, coal fired. The original, the original boat was. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's still steam or not now, or if they have gone in and put a boiler, a diesel boiler in there. I don't know. Right. But, but it was steam powered. This would hold how many passengers about? It was what? How many passengers about? You know, I don't know. I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to answer that because I don't know. I'm, okay. My guess is you're probably looking at 35 to 50. But yeah. it, would also, it would also have been used to carry freight. These would have been island boats as well. They would have gone out to the islands in Casco Bay or Upper Maine. Uh, and they would, have, they would have had a circuit to go with, you know, a daily, weekly circuits carrying passengers and freight. Uh, definitely freight. And I think this is where it ties into the model railroad area is that something made in Portland, Maine, it's brought to Newburyport on a steamboat. And this would definitely be uh, a type of steamboat that would have made that run. And it would have connected with a rail in Newbury or in Gloucester and then hauled into Boston for shipping. Or uh, going to Portland, if it was going to go to England, they'd go to Portland, Maine with it. And they put it on the Boston and Maine and bring it up to Portland. Uh, but the boats are invariably connected with the railroad at some point. Anybody else have any questions for Bruce? Well, Bruce, thanks Wait, so just much. A, Excuse me. Just a comment. Just a comment. We do have steamships running in Ontario in the uh, Muskoka Lakes, between the lakes as tourist boats. They're yep. probably twice to three times the size of that boat. Yeah. And they are still, I think the Seguin is still uh, coal-fired and steam. So they put on quite a show. Steel hull and a lot of the stuff on top's wood. Yeah, you call yeah, the Seguin. The Seguin. The Seguin. Seguin. The Seguin. Yeah, Seguin. Now we call that the Seguin, but you call it the Seguin. That's yeah, the RMS Seguin. Yeah. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I came on late. How long is your, your boat when it's finished? 50, it's a 53-inch boat, HO scale. Okay. The, 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 right. uh, the, the Sabino was 57 feet long. This is mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Okay, thank you. No plans of a, for a no-scale kit? Um, I don't have anything on a drawing board right now. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know, with all the technologies out there, it probably isn't going to be as hot as it might have been 10 years to do that. 
So that's a possibility. I know you do owe a scale because I have two of your lobster boats, water line and a full hull. But my uh, pride and joy was I bought a, a dredge that you had scratch built down okay. in Maine at one of the conventions. And I have that here. So oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's great. That's great. Um, you could scratch build this boat. I can get you a hull to use and you can scratch build this boat. I have the hull now, so <laughs> it's yeah. just on a long list of boats to build, but yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could, you could scratch build it in, in O scale easily. Yeah. Actually it would be, it would be a nice project. Uh, I can't think of any complications whatsoever. The, it, the hull is a hull and there were many different hulls configurations used in these steamers. They weren't ever the same. The only, the only thing would take a little time is putting the curvature into the walls of the deck house to match the deck and, yeah. and the upper deck too, because it's got a, a curve to it to run the water off of it. So Yeah, you got one of those, uh, those things that's got the little needles on it. And you go like this. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's all you need. Gauge. You that on the hull. Contour gauge. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. You can do it. Absolutely. Very yeah. good. Thanks, Bruce. All right. Thank you.